Welcome to the Gentleman's Guide to Gaming. Yes, it's my face on my other channel. How bizarre. This video is actually a response to a recent one by a chap by the name of Tetsubo57. You all know him. You all know Tets. You all know him and his radical leftish views. Now, Tetsubo has been a loyal follower of the Bioshock Let's Play, among my other Let's Plays, I'll be quite honest, he's a thoroughly decent chap like that, always been very supportive of myself and my channel, both of them, and he recently did a video giving an overview of Bioshock, his opinion on it, and I felt inclined to make a response to that, because while I'm not in the business of reviewing video games, because I never get a chance to play the ones that I'm not let's playing, uh, so it would be a very limited channel, especially given XCOM's length. I did feel inclined to respond, because he raised some interesting points about Bioshock and about our main character, Jack, or the Gentleman Gamer, having to murder people, or rather choosing to murder people as he went through Rapture. He also made points about the political side of Rapture and how it was obviously a mirror image of, well, Ayn Rand's uh, ideals in things like Atlas Shrugged, for instance. How everyone down in Rapture was either a con man or a rube. And, of course, how the Little Sisters were systematically raped repeatedly and turned into, I suppose, vectors for zombies to feed from in a strange sort of way. Also, he raised the point about Frank Fontaine, and why would fr someone like Frank Fontaine, who is clearly a bit smarter than the other denizens of Rapture, why would he stay down in Rapture? Well, I can't answer all of those things. What I can answer, however, firstly, is the question about why your main character injects himself with a hypo as soon as he arrives in Rapture, despite not knowing what's in there. Now, the I can answer this because it's detailed in the game, and... You are forgiven for not noticing this because it is very early on. You step out of the bathosphere. You encounter your first splicer, I believe. Yeah, it's been a while. And Atlas says, over the radio, Now would you kindly stick that syringe in your arm or something to that effect? Would you kindly? Would you kindly? Now, if you've watched the game from beginning to end, you will know the importance of the phrase, would you kindly. Bioshock, in my mind, is a fantastic game, and the reason it's a fantastic game is because it gives you this illusion of free will. Now, everyone knows that most first-person shooters are very linear. They are railroad games. You would not be able to play a role-playing game at a tabletop, let's say, like Bioshock or like Doom or any other straightforward first-person shooter because you go from beginning to end and that's it. You can't deviate. Well, I say that, but Bioshock gives you the illusion of deviation. You can go back to any level you choose at any point and you can do things like hunt down big daddies or you like. I killed Sander Cohen in that game far later on in the game than most people do, at which point I obtained his Muse Box key. Now, I could have gone back to Fort Frolic and opened his Muse Box and found what was in. I chose not to. But I chose not to because Atlas, or Frank Fontaine, or Andrew Ryan, never said to me, would you kindly go back to Fort Frolic and open the box? Now, just to clarify, the would you kindly phrase is, of course, uh, something that compels your character to do something, but it doesn't always compel you to do it in a cutscene. There's only two cutscenes, or three rather, including the plane crash at the beginning, where you have no control over what your character does. At every other point in the game, you choose whether you go backwards, forwards, left or right, whether you hit that person or let them hit you, whether you kill Sander Cohen or whether you leave Fort Frolic without killing Sander Cohen etc. It is entirely up to you how you play the game. And so you think you have free will. Of course you don't. You know you have free will. You're the player. But at the same time, it makes it seem like Jack, the protagonist, has free will. The swerve turn, when it turns out that would you kindly is a trigger, is a command phrase, is something that your character will react to is such a beautiful swerve that I don't know whether I can perhaps describe it fully. 
you inject yourself in the game because you want to become more powerful, because you want to kill splices more easily, because it allows you to play the game easier. You want to advance to the next level because you think that killing Andrew Ryan is the thing you've got to do. You want to go and speak to Julia Langford because she is going to help you get to the next level, to Fort Frolic in this case. But the fact is, you're, you may be doing that but for that reason, but your character isn't. At the start of the game you think that you and your character have the same motivation. And this is why the game is beautiful, because it turns out two thirds of the way through the game your character doesn't have the same motivation as you at all. You thought he did. You have been playing it as if he did. And so the biggest dupe in the game isn't the protagonist. Certainly not Andrew Ryan, whose own son has essentially been sent to murder him. Sorry for the spoilers. It's that you have been duped. The player has been duped. All of these things you have been doing simply because the words would you kindly have prefaced a sentence. And you've not even paid attention to those. You've done these things because you felt they were the right thing to do. And yet it turns out you've been doing them because the game has been telling you to do them. Now let us sink in a bit Rewatch the uh, part of the video that's called uh, Bioshock Part Whatever, Would You Kindly, or A Man Chooses a Slave Obeys. And it might become a bit more clear if it isn't already. I think that's a fantastic little addition to the game, and it's what makes Bioshock particularly unique among other first-person shooters. You didn't get many first-person shooters until quite recently, where you did have the option to go backwards, forwards, left and right between levels, going back to other levels, uh, retreading old ground if you so chose. And you can do that in Bioshock, you can do that all the way up until the end, because Atlas never tells you you can't. Now, as far as Frank Fontaine goes, why did Frank Fontaine stay down in Rapture? Well, I've read the novel, and the uh, novel is very good, surprisingly, for a video game. And it doesn't necessarily describe it in there, but I think you can presume that, yes, Frank Fontaine is more intelligent, or at least more savvy, than any of the other people living in Rapture. He is willing to use Rapture, while everyone else sees Rapture as some paragon. Some kind of utopia that they've got to dwell in, where all their dreams will come true, if only they work hard enough for them. Well, Frank Fontaine's willing to let everyone else work hard, as long as he can cream off the top of what they do. So, after it all gets shot to sh sunshine, after Frank Fontaine fakes his own death, another spoiler, and re-emerges re as Atlas, another spoiler, why doesn't he just leave Rapture? Why doesn't he up sticks, he's made his money, leave, and in fact expose the entire city to the wide world and take profit off of that? Well, because in a funny sort of way, Frank Fontaine, being the ultimate con man that he is, has bought into the rapture lie himself. He believes that he can make something out of rapture by the end of it, that he's put so much work into this grift, that he's pulled all these strings and tweaked all of these knobs to such an extent that he is going to be the winner. And in that respect, he is no different than Andrew Ryan. Andrew Ryan, who has manipulated everything to be on top perpetually until his death. Frank Fontaine thinks he's done the exact same thing. He set up his con so well to come back as Atlas, then it, it would have been foolish to leave at that point, surely. And then after Atlas, after that cover got blown, or he voluntarily dropped it. He felt that he finally had Rapture in his grasp. At no point did he realise that Rapture was just a morgue or an asylum. There, it was no profit to be gained in Rapture. The only reason he stayed, aside from that, is because he had a complete loathing for Andrew Ryan. Because Frank Fontaine is, in his own way, as well as being nihilistic, a libertarian. He wants to be his own man, he wants to control his own destiny, and he does not give one shit 
who suffers as a result. Andrew Ryan tried to tell him what he couldn't do, see John Locke. <laughs> and so Frank Fontaine bucked. Frank Fontaine did not like that. Frank Fontaine did not like that Andrew Ryan was a bigger fish than him in this pond. So Frank Fontaine made it his personal vendetta to bring down Andrew Ryan in some way or another and take what was his. So Frank Fontaine did not stay down for rational reasons. He didn't stay down necessarily because he actually thought he could turn a profit from Rapture. He said when he reveals himself that I'm going to run Rapture from tits to toes. Well, what are you going to run, Frank? What exactly is working down there except for the Circus of Values machines? Are you going to export Adam to the surface and be the sole proprietor of plasmids in the USA? Or maybe, maybe, he intended to bring more people down and clean the city up, but I very much doubt it, because someone like Frank Fontaine isn't destined to rule a city cleanly and say, I am your king, you will do what I say. And I say that's clean, but that is pretty much straightforward king behaviour. Rather, Frank Fontaine is a perpetual con man and he will just continually take and take and take and in his gluttony he won't realise when what he's taking is slipping through his fingers because there is so much of it that he is holding. If he had left while he was ahead he would have been sitting pretty but as it happens he didn't and he died. So that's Frank Fontaine covered. As far as the objectivist thing goes, now Ken Levine being at least the conceptual designer of Bioshock as well as the writer of the story and so on, has said that he studied uh, objectivism among, uh, among various other philosophies, I think. And so Rapture is in no way supposed to be an ideal <laughs> libertarian society, far from it. He is poking holes in the entire Ayn Rand dream of objectivism, and all fairness to him, he does it very, very well. A society of individuals is an oxymoron, it doesn't work. And a society based purely on money and not on anybody's human merits and loving thy common man, you know, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work for we humans because ultimately it just leads to, leads to backstabbing, lawlessness, anarchy and death and madness. And so it was a criticism. The game allows us to look at a Randian society, but also, and it shows us the heights of Randian society because you can tell from some of the audio diaries what Rapture was for such a brief amount of time, what it was. You can see from the beauty of Rapture what it was, but you can also see what it became. Now, does that mean every Randian society would become that way? Possibly. For all we know, all that we do know is that Rapture ended up like that in Bioshock. So, at least for Andrew Ryan, objectivism possibly wasn't the way to go. Or at least Ryanism, I think he calls it. I don't think I've got much more to add on these subjects, but I was very pleased to see Tetsuo's response. And by all means, if you want to do something similar with your thoughts on the game, do feel free. I doubt I'll be doing a Let's Play of Bioshock 2, at least not yet. But I do thank you very much for watching, all of those of you who did watch. It is much appreciated. I very much appreciate your support constantly through all of the Let's Plays that I do. It uh, heartens me to the core to see you watching and commenting my videos. It's utterly pleasurable for me to interact with you like that. So thank you very much for watching. I think Bioshock is a brilliant game with a brilliant setting, quite unique in a first-person shooter or any other video game. And like Wraith the Oblivion is for role-playing games, Bioshock is the closest thing in my mind, or at least one of the closest things, that a video game has got to art. There are many video games that are artistically beautiful, but very few video games convey such a strong political message, or at least did so about five or six years ago. There's a few more these days. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.